हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम टू यप मास्टर एंड वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम अगो यू हैड अदर क्लासेस एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द अदर टॉपिक इन बॉटनी राइट इन द प्रीवियस क्लास ऑन द यप मास्टर एंड द यूट्यूब लाइव चैनल ऑफ यप मास्टर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ रूट्स नाउ द एज द मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ रूट इज फिनिश्ड वी आर अबाउट टू स्टार्ट विद द स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज द स्टेम दैट इज कमिंग aerial or you can say that is coming from the plumule which is the growing axis of the plant embryo towards the sunlight so it's fine let's discuss something about our study plants that how to study and how to get the better marks in the exam okay as i told you that you are going through the phase of learning the examples the scientific name of different plants and very soon you are going to learn the scientific name of different animals as well now how to memorize them because even a single question of such kind that is based on the scientific terminology the name of the scientist or the name of any example any of these three at least even one or two questions are not one two actually five to six questions on these things we are observing in the neat papers in the coming in these past few years so it means why to lose those questions now if they are simple it means attempted by all number 2 if they are not so simple and a mixture of so many examples are there so many examples in one question clubbed into one say for example if 10 or 12 examples are there and they are asking about such thing which is present only in three among them then obviously it becomes very much difficult for majority of the students to attempt such questions now how to get command over those questions it is all about practice my dear that what kind of questions you are practicing and how you have started your learning remember one thing that reading a book and learning are two different things okay i'm not saying that learn by heart the lines of the book no you must need to know how to read a book so that you can understand it and if you are understanding the things properly it is going to be much more easier to get all the things by heart okay to get all the things here in your mind for whole of your life it is about the repetition of the examples it is about recollecting the examples whenever those examples are asked to you so be sure about this thing that we are going to discuss and that we are going to continue in the next topic and try to identify such examples in the coming topics of morphology of flowering plants which we have studied in previous classes so that is what we need to do and importantly that you people are going to the class 11th or some have already took the admission because the cbsc exams are over so in that cases i must tell you one thing that if you are following any of the book whether it's ncert or any reference book or any other kind of study material by a distance education or something i must recommend you to download the yup master app the download is free you can have the daily practice paper on the topic that is discussed in the classroom on day to day basis so this is what making you a better student right this is what making you a head of rest of the students the strategy its implementation means the execution of the planning is necessary for achieving any kind of target reading a book or getting some kind of material is just the first step towards the target the next is about how to utilize these resources your masters your books your study material all these type of things are secondary the primary thing is about your regularity primary thing is about your devotion towards your target if you are devoted definitely you are going to get your target because you can utilize your resources all of resources like us the books and the other things you can utilize them as much as possible so with the yup master app you are able to harness all the kind of resources whether it's study material of the topic that is to be taught in the class whether it's about the question bank means in the top 
terms of the daily practice papers as well as the weekend exams everything is available on the application so those who are watching on the youtube live i am just telling them that download the yapmaster app to get streaming streamless or you can just say this easy going classes wherever at the comfort of your home or you can have it on the mobile phone smart tv laptop computer any kind of device okay so here we are going to begin with our uh, next topic in the morphology of flowering plants and we are studying the stem we are studying the stem and here we say the stem see this diagram is not new for us we have made this diagram in very first class of morphology of flowering plant and i told you that this is a mustard plant this mustard plant in which i have mentioned that the two important things are shown one is the root system and the other one is the shoot system okay in morphology i told you in the earlier classes that the characters which are studied in morphology are either vegetative or reproductive okay so those who have missed that lecture can watch it on the yap master app and remember one thing that what we are studying right now is the basic going to be obviously you can say it is going to be the type of study which is going to help you in memorizing the things clear it will improve your memory skills so be connected with us and watch the classes continuously appear in the test daily so this is the stem that we are talking about and we have mentioned that stem is the name of the topic only we yet we are yet to start the topic and we need to start the topic with the proper things so what i have told you in the previous class is about the shoot system from where it is coming as i told you it comes from the plumule and remember plumule is the dead type dead part of the embryonic axis that grows towards sun that is growing towards sun so if anything is growing towards gravity like root it is positively geotropic the thing that is going towards sunlight will be considered as phototropic right it will be considered as positively phototropic so as we have discussed in earlier classes the same thing that what shoot system is consisting of shoot system is having vegetative as well as reproductive parts what are those parts see leaf is vegetative or reproductive leaf is vegetative or reproductive answer is vegetative okay the same the other thing they can ask like what about flower is it reproductive or vegetative it is reproductive okay so the shoot system is going to bear both type of parts vegetative and reproductive and it is holding all these things towards the sunlight okay fine see these leaves are coming at certain places which are labeled as what nodes so this is the node i am saying this is the node this is the node this one is the node this one is the node like this way fine so if leaves are arising at the nodes i can easily identify the structure what is node from where you are observing the branches from where you are observing the leaves those structures are nodes so in between nodes the place is called internode so internode is the zone between two nodes right okay let's count so here from here if i am going to count this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 5 6 like these these are internodes okay clear if you want to see it more clearly you can have sugar cane or the maize or even a grass stem see them you can identify some band like thing those bands on the stem are nodes which are bearing the leaves or the branches okay fine the other thing that i would like to mention over here is this thing see this bud now in the roots we have studied that birds are present on certain roots try to recall try to recall obviously try to recall you can get the answer it's not difficult one yeah that one is sweet potato dahlia asparagus they have buds on the roots but buds are not usual on the structure other than stem stem is usually having the bud now see this the bud is converted into flower at the tip okay the bud is present here in this place 
So two places are there that I can label here. One that is present in between the stem and the portion on the stem from where the leaf is arising. This portion is called as axil. This is called as axil. Therefore, this bud is called axillary bud. This bud will be called axillary bud. Its position is sidewise. So you can call it as lateral also. It is on the side of the stem. Sides of the stem. Fine. Count the number of axillary buds here. Although their number are countless. You, can, you can't count the number of total axillary buds on a plant. But here actually just for representation I am make, making all these axillary bud more prominent. Okay. Next. If these are axillary bud then what is this structure which is present in the tip. I said that this was also the bud. If this was the bud and present at the tip, if anything present in the axil, axillary bud, if something is present at the terminal, it must be mentioned as what? That will be mentioned as terminal bud. This will be terminal bud. Right? And here I am saying the terminal bud is bearing flowers, so I will call it as floral bud as well. What? Floral bud as well. The bud that bears flower is floral bud and the other which is going to bear the structures like leaf, branches, thorns, these type of things, those will be called as vegetative. Okay. So this is a little bit brief intro about the structures that are present on the stem. So what you have seen on the shoot system, I saw the structure which are one leaves arising at nodes. I have seen the branches. Okay. I have seen the flower. The flower may be matured into a fruit as well. I have observed buds on the stem. At the tip, terminal bud. In the axil, axillary bud. I have seen these many things on the shoot system. Now, other character is about the different things. What? So, here we continue with the stem. We are saying the stem is the ascending part of the axis, as I told you, growing towards upside. Ascending means up. Okay, lift going up, ascending movement. Right? So the ascending part of the axis bearing the branches, leaves, flowers and fruits that is the stem. Okay, Ascending part of axis. Which axis? The embryonic axis. Okay, the, That part was plumule that gave rise to shoot system Okay, in the earlier stages. Fine. The next thing is about that it is the condition we are saying this dullest from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed and the bears nodes and internodes it is bearing nodes and internodes okay fine and node is the place which is having leaves node is the place which is having leaves node is the place from where branches will come okay node is the place from where the leaves are arising node is the place from the branches can come in the future so these are the characters that we have mentioned Okay, so that is the thing that we have studied about the stem. So what is bud actually? Bud itself is a short, small structure. Wait, before that, the stem bear buds. The stem is bearing buds, which may be terminal or axillary, which may be terminal or axillary as I told you. But sometimes we are observing in certain examples that along with the axillary bud, there may be some other type of bud also present, where in nearby the axil means somewhere here or somewhere maybe here so those are mentioned as accessory buds those are called as accessory buds terminal is first category axillary second category we are saying third is accessory accessory buds so you can keep them together with the axillary one so the axillary and the accessory buds these are called as lateral buds fine if any bud is present at some other place other than the stem, that will be named as adventitious buds. Fine. We will go for it. So what are buds? Bud is nothing. It is actually young undeveloped shoot or people can call them as compact stem. Bud is compact stem. So if it is un young undeveloped shoot, what it can give rise to? On the basis of position, we are saying if it is at the apex of the stem, we are calling it as apical bud. Whereas the one which is present in the axil of leaf is mentioned as axillary bud. Clear? 
be clear about these wordings i said at the tip so apical bud and here i am saying this is apical the other one is axillary apical bud is also called as what just i told you what you can call it as terminal bud and axillary bud can be mentioned as what lateral bud okay right fine then next we can see may be possible that along with the axillary bud accessory buds may be present may be not always right not always fine they are also considered to be lateral buds the third kind of category is place other than the stem so if anything is displaced from the actual place or arising at some other point from the usual one is called as adventitious so adventitious buds may be present on root will be called as radical buds if they are on root they are called as radical buds any example can you recall okay i'll give you the time by the time i'm going to tell you the second type of adventitious bud and that is foliar bud means on leaves that is on leaves okay so when i am mentioning these thing root and leaves in that cases what is the criteria i am saying the roots which are having buds on them i just mentioned their example just a few moments ago here and those are what sweet potato one example is sweet potato and the other example is dahlia asparagus these all so because of the presence of buds only this structure sweet potato or the dahlia can propagate vegetatively because they have a structure the miniature structure that can give rise to the whole plant that is what bud okay so we have mentioned them as reproductive roots you can see the earlier class just here day before yesterday's class the last class that the saturday one so the foliar buds on the leaves if i am talking about where you can see them you we can see these things on bryophyllum soon we are going to have this example in the leaves not here we are not going to discuss this bryophyllum much here in this topic we'll discuss it in later one in the leaves where leaves are going to be the propagules okay so these are the things that we have here and we are saying that bud is present on the stem and it is usual if it is present on the stem but in certain cases we are saying that buds may get modified means instead of bearing the leaf like simple structure or flower like reproductive structure it may be doing something else like what like one of such example is called as bulbils now what are bulbils clear and what are thorns and the third is tendrils they all are different structures okay tendril is something what tendril is something which is mentioned as a thin wire like structure that helps to at get attached with the mechanical support so it is like this is the mechanical support the tendril from other plant is coming and getting coiled over it that is the tendril let's see i'll tell i'll tell you some example with photographs so that you can understand the term tendril much easily then here is bulbils are the swollen buds they are swollen bud they got swollen because they are supposed to perform as propagule i told you propagule in the earlier class as well what propagule is what is propagule so propagule is the structure that is going to help the structure or the plant to propagate vegetatively propagule to perform vegetative propagation right they perform vegetative propagation so when they perform vegetative propagation they are called as propagule which structure remember only the vegetative structure are supposed vegetative parts clear these are usually vegetative parts that turn into a propagating structure right so bulbil is the same here we are saying the bud was actually supposed to form the floral bud means to give rise to the flower but what they did they performed some condensing structure or you can say the storage of the food by which they can sustain the unfavorable season or they can have the food for the young one 
when these are getting separated from the plant body, they have to provide nutrition to the young one. It is just like bulbils are what? Bulbils are the structure you can compare with a seed. Right? But the seed is going to give rise to the true stem, true leaf, these type of things. Seed is having reserve food. Okay? And soon it is going to form the shoot system, root system. The bulbil is something similar. When it is going to get separated from the plant body in the soil or in other places, they are also going to sprout and give rise to the new plant for which the reserve food is required. So here we are saying that bulbils are the fleshy structure. See this fleshy here represent because they are having some food in them so that the young growing structure from them can be supported until or unless they are going to have their own leaves. Fine. So agave and allium. Agave is a plant you can say. You can remember agave by pollination by bat. Agave is pollinated by bat. Allium. The garlic is the example. In garlic, we are observing the floral but get fleshy. They are forming bulbils. Okay, fine. This is the first case. The second is Dioscoria. In Dioscoria, vegetative bud which was present in the other places or which are which is not supposed to bear the flower get condensed to form the bulbils. Okay, so these are first of the type where the bud is modified. The second case, in certain places we are observing that plant is bearing thorns. What is it? This is the stem. Okay. This is the leaf I am saying. Now here I am saying that this is the axillary bud which is supposed to be axillary bud in this area. Right. In this area it is supposed to be axillary bud. But what happened? We are saying that the structure become, the bud become woody and pointed. For what purpose? Just to provide protection against predation, maybe. So in that cases, we are calling this woody, thick pointed structure as thorn. Remember, thorns are different, prickles are different and spines are different. Don't intermix these things. These are different. What you see on the rose are prickles. What you see in acacia or zizipus means the bear. They are the structure which are called spines on opuntia means cactus type of plant spines. Right. And what you can see on the orange or in the lemon or in the bougainvillea, those are thorns. Please remember all these three are pointed structures that protect the plant from predation. But still we have differences among them. They may be performing similar function for what protection from predators. But they all are different. The thorn is a modified stem because it's a part of but but is what stem, right? So thorn is a modified stem, right? Whereas spine is modified in leaf or the part of leaf. And prickles are mere outgrowth of the surface. Here is the difference. The three things are not same. Wait, I'll write like this. Prickles. are not same as spines, are not same as thorns. These three things are different. Okay. This is the one liner for today. We are going to elaborate these things in the coming topic that how they are different clear, and what similar they are performing. So thorns, I, as I told you that these are the structure that are developing from the axillary bud in the examples like citrus bougainvillea, where we are observing the vegetative or the axillary bud turned into a pointed thick woody structure. This is it. Next is tendril and tendril means the thin wire like that coils around the support and here we say that where we are observing whitest is the scientific name of what? Grape wine. Okay. Then is passion flower or passiflora where we are observing the axillary bud is modified means from the axil. You can see I can make the diagram much more clear so that you can have better understanding for these things. And the second example which is told is cooker bits who is developing the terminal bud into tendril. So first about this. So this is the stem. <coughs> this is the leaf. 
and I, we are saying that the axillary bud is getting modified. Okay, fine. So axillary bud comes from here. Na? So it means this is the structure coming from here. Okay. Whereas in the cases of cucurbits, the terminal bud is getting modified. So this structure is obviously different. This will be the stem. Okay. This will be the stem. And here is the node from where the leaves are arising. This is going to be the terminal. What happened at the terminal? The thin, the structure is becoming thin and coiled like this. Trying to get the support from the nearby structure. If anything comes in the contact, definitely they are going to make coil around it. So these are different. Definitely they are different from one another. Okay, so these are the modification of bud, right? So as per the function, what they are going to bear, they can be two vegetative and floral bud. Don't get confused. I told you adventitious bud as what? The adventitious bud was different. What was the adventitious bud? As I told you, the adventitious bud was something that I have mentioned as the bud present on leaf. Yeah, right. Foliar bud. Okay. And here I am talking about floral bud type of thing. Here see this. This one in alium. Okay. So next. The next thing that we are going to have is about the largest bud. This is actually what? Cabbage. Oh. This is Brassica Olaracea Capitata. Or you can call in the common language as cabbage. The purpose to tell this thing here is that this cabbage is largest bird. Example of largest bird. This is largest bud. Okay. So that is the thing that we need to have. Right. Simple. Hmm. You can assume that how does a bud looks like. This is a bit larger one, so more clearly visible. Next is about the forms of the stem. If forms of the stem are to be studied, one thing is to be very clear. And that is what? That the stem can be of different type. One, you can say collicent stem. Collicent means those which are becoming aerial and that can be identified. Clear? One word is collicent see terms are not very commonly used c a u l e s c n t collicent distinct with nodes and internodes fine so here is the first such kind we are talking about that is codex or you can say we are actually studying about the tree habit so this type of stem is seen in palm Right? Coconut palm, date palm, those places you are observing this structure. It seems that it is not bearing the branches. True. This is unbranched stem. This one is unbranched stem. When we talk about unbranched stem, it means that the lateral buds seems to be absent. Right? If anyone is going to ask about them, then what about the lateral buds in this structure? What about the lateral bud in this structure? I, I must say this thing, that lateral bud and the apical bud. If I compare the two things here, in this type of stem or you can say the tree, the lateral bud is actually absent. The apical bud is active and continue to grow. That's why height is increasing. But no branches. No branches at all. Unbranched stem. Okay. That kind of character you can see. And you are observing as the stem is becoming tall and taller. It may have. See after shedding of these things. Clear. May show. Scar of. Fallen leaves. It seems that. The leaves are coming at the apex. Yeah, true. But as the stem grows further, 
the lower leaves are going to shed. So may show scar of fallen leaves. It's possible. And as, as I told you, this can be seen in the palms, whether coconut, date palm. There we have these type of stem, codex. Next, the second type of stem that we used to study is called X current. Now X current is something which is appearing like a cone. It is something that is appearing as a cone as in eucalyptus and casuariana. How to remember them? Eucalyptus you can say remember by saying wix. Wix is having a oil from a kind of oil from eucalyptus. Okay, that smell of wix is because of the eucalyptus oil. Clear? And casuariana. Casuariana is a great one. Casuariana is known to have nitrogen le rich leaves used as fertilizer and the stem is used for what purpose for making timber means furniture and buildings etc okay this is a fast growing stem you can see them means the casuarana in the coastal areas particularly in the belt of Tamil Nadu okay so that type of commercial cultivation of Kesuariana is done there. So we have to tell these things also means here also that what type of buds are present and what got lost. So about the bud, let me tell you again, the lateral bud and the apical bud. Okay, if we have to discuss these two, then I must say that the lateral bud seems to be active, is it? No, not completely. It will grow into certain length of the branches thereafter stops. Get deactivated. And the apical bud that we are talking about. What are they? The apical bud must be active. So the plant height is still increasing. Okay, the assume the structure assumes cone shape. The structure is assuming cone shape. It's a simple one, easy. Next, the next type of stem. The next type of stem is coming to the form of stem in the third case, deliquescent, as you can observe in the banyan tree. Now, this banyan tree type of thing is. In the cases when you are observing the height reaches up to a certain level, after that only the branches are supposed to grow, not the other things. Okay, so when we are talking about deliquescent, you can see mango and banyan. Okay, and this is becoming doom shaped. Why? Because the lateral buds, apical buds, if I compare in that case. The lateral buds are active, whereas apical buds become inactive. So that's why the structure is becoming more denser as compared to its height. Okay, so this is about the deliquescent habit. These are the three usual type of trees actually. Codex, then second is excurrent and the third one is deliquescent. Okay, that type of thing we can mention. Fine. If we have discussed these things, one question can be there and that question on the basis of bud can be there. So there may be a question. What that question is? They are saying about the question is that a tree is bearing 21 branches. Okay. Then the number of apical buds on the tree are just a hypothetical type of question option 1 20 option 2 22 option 3 24 option 4 25 how to get this answer okay see this this is a tree stem now what 
it has its own axis toward this place. Now other side this is bearing the branches. I am not going to make 21 branches just for the sake I am saying. Okay, this is again a branch, right? And now I am saying like this, fine. So in that cases, one, two, three branches are there and this is the main shoot. Okay, so how many apical buds are there? Easy, easy. One, two, three, four. Three branches, four buds. So it means 21 branches, how many apical buds will be there? Answer will be 21 plus one. One is of the main shoot and remaining about the tip of remaining branches means all the branches in total. That will be answered as 22. It's a simple, just simple one. It's not at all much difficult one. If any mathematical questions are there in botany or zoology, they are as simple as this question. But the problem is the answer can be given only if you have gone through these questions. Getting my point? If you have ever studied these questions because these are not given in any book. You cannot find them in an NCRT book or any reference book normally. You can get them when you are doing the practice from different places. So that's why it is told to you from the beginning we are saying that you need to attempt the papers. You need to do the daily papers so that you can have such kind of questions in your practice. So that you can know about that what other type of question can be asked. I said this is not a big mathematical calculation. The problem with the student is if they don't know the fundamental, they are not going to get the answer. Then they will think, ah, such kind of questions are not there in the biology. It's biology, obviously. Apical bud is of biology. It is obviously pure botany, it is. Right? So be clear about this thing for the next time. That the questions are going to be easy. The only thing is that have you ever heard about that question or not? So, in getting the confidence over such questions, you need to do practice. Remember this. So we are about to start with the next type of the stem, the collicent, which is distinct actually. Unfortunately, those stems are supposed to be a little bit weaker than the trees, although they are the erect one. This is about the bamboo. Okay, this is about bamboo. Scientific is bamboo, sir. You know, bamboo can grow as long as one meter, where the speed can be as one meter in a day. Depends on the kind of species. Okay, fine. When we are talking about the bamboo, in that cases, I am observing distinct nodes and internodes on it. Okay, so in this case, we have a word for culm or this kind of stem that this bamboo is categorized in one more way. I can say this as I can say this one as a jointed stem. Why for this? Why the jointed stem is used? The reason lies in the internal structure. We are saying that culm is a jointed stem. The reason lies in the internal structure. What? Here you can see this is hollow internode. This is hollow internode. And this below is solid node. So I think now it is clear why I am calling it as jointed stem. Okay, now I got the reason that the fluid Bansuri is made from bamboo wood only or used made by bamboo, not by other type of wood. The reason is very much clear. It is naturally hollow from inside. Okay, so the hollow internode and solid node is the character of culm. The stem is erect, but still it is hollow from inside. Okay, right. Example can be seen in bamboo, maize and other type of monocot plant like grasses. So this is one of the things that I have told you. Jointed stem with hollow internode and solid node is culm. Hmm. So next is about the stem which is giving a bigger, more bigger confusion. It appears as a stem. We are calling it a scape, right. But it is not at all a kind of stem. If you have ever observed the banana tree, people used to call it as banana tree. You can call it as a plant. But if it is a banana plant, in that case, the stem is actually no stem is there. Okay. The other example you can have 
and that example is this one try to identify this is the simple structure that you can see it is nothing it is a spring onion right the spring onion is bearing certain green like structure on the tip okay what are these green structure are these stem the answer is no if it is stem it is supposed to have bud on it number 2 nodes and internodes are they present on the banana stem no are they present on this green structure of onion answer is no then how we can call this a structure as a stem actually in real terms it is not at all a stem it is actually a kind of pseudo or false stem there are no nodes and internodes over it as well as we can say lack nodes and internodes there are no such markings over it green that bears leaves or in floral sense means bunch of flower at apex so what happened that this banana tree fallen down and we have observed that it is having some rolls means you can just say it is just like papers are rolled one after another that is the appearance of this banana stem from inside so it is better treated as aggregation of the stalk of these leaves right it is better treated as aggregation of leaf stalks right it is not at all a kind of stem appearing as a stem but they are not right so this is false or the zero stem the next is after the scape other character that we have is about the forms of stem and that is the remaining one when i told you the coalescent stem which is distinct the next is a coalescent stem which is indistinct i repeat indistinct or you can say indistinct or reduced stem this is indistinct or reduced stem so this indistinct or reduced stem type of thing that we are mentioning here is obviously having what no identification where we can see this many xerophytic plants means those which are found in desert like places this is such example many xerophytic plants okay fine clear with this okay so many such stems are there where we are not at all able to identify their location where they are present they are called as acolescent stem which type of plants have them xerophytes most commonly xerophytes means which are present in xeric means zero water or no water conditions ah this is some tree trunk i think yeah it is actually this is given here because of certain feature what that this is the example of the source of commercial oak sorry commercial cork this plant is scientific name quercus suber or known as commonly o a k oak the cork is used in making balls right inside the leather ball in cricket what is there cork cork is used in making bottle caps hmm just for the sake this is bark actually remember right this is bark on the woody tree not all stems are woody okay the stems are woody we can observe this formation 
means the bark on the surface fine function of the stem one spreading out the branches bearing leaves flowers and fruits obvious then secondly it conducts water minerals and photosynthesis photosynthesis means product of photosynthesis it is actually nothing other than sugar okay it is nothing other than sugar next is some stems perform the function of storage of food support protection right and of vegetative propagation these are the other functions that can be performed by the stem fine we are going to study with along these modifications of stem although it will come later on right now we need to know other kind of stem now stem can be categorized like because it is supposed to be the part which is growing from the plumule which is going towards the sunlight means aerial stem is usual but if the stem is weak it may lie on the ground means sub aerial getting my point but i am saying whichever is present above the ground surface first about aerial stems no modification nothing i am just telling about aerial stems okay here are some example this plant is called as linderbergia you can find it in your nearby locality clear or the place which is less visited by people you can say some old forts and all those places the other example is this one which is actually oxalis one more example that is coming here is bohemia right what is it actually this is the structure that we used to observe in the plant see this this is a woody plant but it's a climber woody but climber okay these are lianas the name is going to be now next okay this is the structure see these coiled structures are what tendrils okay the same way here also tendrils but the examples are not same this you can observe in garden pea the first one is from garden pea and this one is in lathyrus the wild pea okay the same structure is not getting converted in lathyrus we are observing in place of leaf tendril is coming leaf is modified to tendril and here we are saying in garden pea this is the terminal leaflet means the last leaflet of the structure these are compound leaves we will study this one in the leaves okay and here i am telling that the tendrils may be these kind of tiny structure which are getting coiled over the mechanical support okay we need to know this much only right now next the thing is that as i was telling you that uh, this structure aerial stem means whatever present over the surface epitherinian now all the epitherinian stem can be categorized into different groups you can call them as reduced you can call them as erect you can call them as weak these three categories the reduced means which are just like a disc as i told you in the places like carrot radish turnip these examples okay whereas erect stem are strong and upright just like the trees the cordex excurrent deliquescent examples all such trees are erect stem the weak stem are lying on the ground they are thin soft and are requiring mechanical support don't call them subaerial please they are on the surface i am considering on the surface as epitherinian not as subterranean right now so these weak stem can be these weak stem can be the first cases they may be one creepers they are creeping on the ground right then they may be prailers again creeping on the ground but the two are different from each other okay then again comes the third one lianas and the fourth one is called as climber so these are different examples now how the creepers and the second category trailers are different from each other is the simple one to know this thing how see the example as i told you what oxalis that we have mentioned in the previous picture 
here is linderbergia so trailers are something which are growing on the ground and at the back apex they may rise up they may not they may run horizontal they may rise up okay now they are not bearing adventitious roots from their nodes which one trailers the creepers are the one like grasses strawberry oxalis they are running on the ground but on the nodes they are bearing adventitious roots this is how the creepers can propagate vegetatively by the fragment of their branches or their stem cuttings to the new habitat but trailers can't be in nature getting my point these are fast spreading because of the habit of bearing adventitious roots and being the stem they have buds so the creeper and trailer are different these two are different i repeat how come they are different creepers have or creepers are going to bear adventitious roots at their nodes these don't have trailers don't have these things so lianas are what these are woody climbers lianas are woody climbers and they are telling that these woody climbers are seen in tropical rainforest okay next climbers so climbers is going to be continued because it's a much bigger description we are going to have those remember the difference between the creepers and trailers creeping on the ground both okay creeping on the ground both weak stem both but doing vegetative propagation creepers not the trailers in nature natural i am saying clear so that is the difference in the two right so here comes the climbers and the climbers are into different categories how the stem is going to rise up if you can recollect the example of those which are rising upwards because of their roots they are called as rootlet climbers but the climbers are usually having some organ of climbing or organ for climbing what i said some organ for climbing usually bear some organ for climbing okay some organ for climbing is there so when we have these things that we are going to tell is the first that is tendril climbers right we have tendril climbers here next second type of thing is that how the tendril climbers can be seen just as i told you in lathyrus entire leaf is getting modified into tendril the thin wiry structure whereas in pisum means in the garden pea i was observing only the leaflet is getting modified means just one of the unit of the leaf is getting modified the petiole get modified what is petiole so the petiole leaf apex leaflet entire leaf these all are leaf or the parts of leaf which are getting modified i can show them by the diagram pisum lathyrus already done what about clematis this is the stem this is the leaf but the petiole is not going to be straight this is going to be something like tendril means tendriller so i must make it like this way okay that kind of thing that is in clematis okay other place gloriosa the leaf apex this is the stem this is the leaf and the tip is becoming tendril leaf apex fine so such examples are tendril climbers even the stem may get modified into tendrils possible we have studied this whitest passiflora which bud axillary bud we have made this thing that this is the stem and i am saying that this is the leaf the axil is bearing the tendril okay the diagrammatic presence is not at all similar right the other type of example that we can mention will be hook climbers okay here i can mention one more example that is cooker bits that we have studied previously hook climbers means in bougainvillea the pointed structure become little bit bent the thorn 
become little bit bent that is called as hook the same is seen in other places as well like cariza duranta and bignonia okay the other one is rootlet climbers remember we had a picture of this the roots which are helping in climbing to the mechanical climbing on the mechanical support we are climbing roots so rootlet climbers can be seen in piper beetle or pothos piper beetle there we have mentioned in the root okay so for those who are watching us on the youtube live you can watch us on yup master app download the app to see the previous classes download the app to have the daily practice paper on the topic on all the subjects which are available there you can browse through all the topics and you can have the down, download of the material as well which is available for morphology right choose your language choose your subject and thereafter you are going to have a lot of things on your application that can be downloaded on android or the apple either of the phones you can have that app in your tv but the unfortunate thing is that you can watch the classes you cannot have the papers there so please download the yup master app to be continuous with us in the in your success story right see here the pothos and piper beetle are the example of rootlet climbers whereas twinners now here i am saying that what type of structure are acting as organ for climbing here is is climb here it is tendril here it is tendril here it is hook and here are roots but in twinners there is nothing in twinners there is nothing in the name of climbing organ lack any organ for climbing then what they will do so they will twin themselves around the mechanical support the entire plant is getting as a tendril that's it that will be the twinner so the things are totally different remember this so rootlet climbers hook climbers tendril climbers have the organ for climbing twinners don't have okay twinners don't have remember this one so other are other are sub aerial now we are up to the topic which is called as modification now we are talking about modification till now we have studied only the forms of stem we have studied the modification of bud now we are going to study about the sub aerial modification of stem what are they right what are the sub aerial modifications of stem so one they are going to be an adventitious roots at the node in this way if they are stem they have bud on them if they are bearing adventitious roots also in that case they can spread faster they can do vegetative propagation as well as vegetative propagation is common right both characters for vegetative propagation are getting fulfilled for vegetative propagation we need one the structure that bear bud number two we need adventitious roots both structures are getting fulfilled here so here is the type that we are mentioning the first is called as runner the second one is called as stolen the third is called as sucker and the fourth is called as offset so the four are the names now how these are different or similar we need to know they are similar because they can reach to the next or the neighboring places wherever empty soil is available for them empty farmland or land is available for them they can spread in those places just by spreading their branches okay right just like you can uh, see the carpet grass in your lawn and that kind of condition can be seen in all of them but little bit differences are also there how they are different now if i am saying about them see the diagrams that are given and here with the diagrams i have some examples as well see runner is something like a grass which is spreading on the ground spreading all over okay that's it nothing else okay this is about the runner spreading on ground surface right if it is spreading on ground surface we have this type of thing with us okay number 
second stolen the stolen is a different one you can see the base means the basal branch the lower most branch is bearing the structure which is going into the soil then coming out that is the structure which is stolen okay this branch is considered as stolen not the this one okay so you can see this thing strawberry jasmine type of places and here it is branch from lower nodes goes underground and then again become aerial what you can do by this time so the new plant is coming you can take out this plant okay you can take out this plant this is how we can say vegetative propagation is taking place right the other example is sucker you can see this thing in peppermint is having this condition which is called as stolen the next is called as sucker the chrysanthemum and pineapple are the examples here the condition is bit different the branch is underground not the lower base we are saying it is almost underground it is coming from the underground stem lateral branch from underground stem right becoming aerial okay that type of condition is seen in sucker the other character about the offset is that offset is pistia and acornia in the cases of pistia and acornia as we are mentioning what type of character can be there so in the cases of offset there is single internode what i said single internode one only and on the apex of which means at the tip bear bunch of leaves at apex and tuft of root means bunch of root i am just using another word tuft of tuft of roots at base that is seen in offset icornia means water hyacinth or infamous as terror of bengal is an invasive weed spread so much fast you know this thing i think you must have studied these things in the lower classes that vegetative propagation is fast and result in faster propagation of such plants okay so these are sub aerial modifications or stem modifications right do all weak stem are modified stem answer is no right these all are considered as creepers these all are creepers so among so among the weak stem which i am telling you the creepers trailers lianas climbers who is propagating vegetatively in nature spreading through its branch cutting or the stem cutting or the fragment of the stem answer is creeper is spreading like this out of these four which can be considered as sub aerial modification i am giving the option creeper the second trailer third lianas and the fourth climber who is considered as sub aerial modification of stem first creeper okay be clear about this thing sub aerial modification of stem is modification that is providing vegetative propagation okay propagating stems next the other characters but in certain cases we used to learn one more thing that the stem has become underground that certainly is a kind of modification because the stem was supposed to be aerial now how the stem is becoming underground maybe for some other kind of functions i'll tell you the common thing about these structures remember the underground stem now remember this being stem being stem they have buds now number 
द सेकेंड करेक्टर इज दैट गेट कंडेंस्ड ड्यू टू स्टोरेज ऑफ फूड right they got condensed due to storage of food now the situation that they are telling that these are the features of underground stem agree the structure that is having the bud can grow into a new plant right okay bud is a complex stem that can give rise to entire of the plant body the one who is having storage of food can withstand the starving conditions or you can say the condition when actual food is not available or you can say when the season is not favorable okay so in that case is the one who can propagate who can survive through unfavorable season therefore because of bud that i am telling you so because of bud that i am telling you is it can propagate vegetatively and number 2 it can survive in unfavorable condition because of the stored food the new plant that is going to come in the favorable season will get the food from the reserve okay so reserve food those structure will act as perinating structures remember this perinating structure perination requires what are the criteria for perination perinating structure means the one who can do propagation who can survive the unfavorable condition as well the propagule were subaerial stems also but they were not the perinating structure okay the perinating structure here are underground stems so how they are getting the benefit just remember one thing if there is forest fire what will happen all the aerial parts are going to be finished the bud the seed everything is going to be lost if present aerially if there is a flood the same thing will happen the tree will get broke down or you can say the entire of the aerial part is going to be washed away with the water okay in that cases it seems that the underground structure are getting more protected so the plants make their bud underground just to protect themselves for any kind of climatic situations maybe you can say even they are getting protected from the predator as well okay so right these are underground they are protected they are protected from the environmental threats they are protected from the other kind of things also and they can give rise to the new structure whenever the situation is going to be favorable in the next class we are going to continue with the underground modifications of the stem and we will conclude the chapter towards aerial modification of the stem right we will learn the differences how the thorns prickles and spines are different that is going to be more interesting towards the leaf and the other portions in the morphology of flowering plants so stay with us and have all the classes so that you can study much better online just like with the comfort of your home it is better to plan it is better to execute your plan work on the strategy so that you can get the result okay try to make yourself more successful by having the better execution of the planning right so thank you for watching the yep master thank you for watching for those people those who are watching us on youtube live if you haven't downloaded the yep master app please download the yep master app and the youtube live people subscribe the channel press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the upcoming classes upcoming programs from the yep master thank you and all the best